there, friends. I just finished cleaning my workstation so that we can get a blood culture from this febrile patient. So I'm gonna take off my gloves and I'm gonna gather, wash my hands to go outside the room and get all my supplies. workstation and then I'm going to come in and wash my hands and I'm going to stop my patient's pump or in this case we'll just shut it off since I touched the pump I'm going to wash my hands again hand washing is the key to success and I'm gonna end up putting on some gloves so that I can disconnect this tubing from my patient and put a red cap on it. Since I'm disconnecting the tubing and putting a red cap on it, I will need to relabel this tubing to expire within 24 hours if it not, is not already marked to do so. clamp here. Now, some central lines have markings for the clamp, so just make sure if they do that you're clamping in the appropriate spot. So then after that, I'm going to take off these gloves. I'm going to wash my hands and get a new set of gloves so that I can prepare my um, sterile field and supplies. So some supplies you would want to bring in is a mask. So when I'm getting closer to doing the procedure, I would end up putting a mask on. My hair has, it's slightly pulled back, but I'm going to put a bouffant on just because it's a little bit free hanging. And then I'm going to take my glasses off because they're going to fog up for you if I don't. So then following that, we'll assemble all the supplies. So I have a blood culture bottle right here. Um, I have some alcohol wipes that we'll be utilizing. We'll move these purple wipes so you can see a little bit better. Now the blood culture um, transfer device would come in a packaging. We just don't have it that way. So make sure that you know that this would be in the packaging at the time. I have a new needleless adapter, some sterile um, two by two gauze, a syringe, it always has to be 10 cc or greater, so this is a 12 cc syringe, some 10 ml flushes, and then my sterile gloves. Now make sure anyone within three feet of this patient or nearby has a mask on because we are gonna be opening up the line and removing that needle adapter. So I'm gonna open my sterile field and you'll have a little bit more room because your patient will hopefully not be sitting on a table. And you're gonna open all of your supplies onto your sterile field. Now blood cultures um, really should have a second person watching you so that they can follow along with the um, Advent for Children work instructions and then they can also kind of keep an eye because even the best of us have um, a potential to contaminate our sterile field at any time so they can be that second eye watching you. I have Christina in the corner. She just didn't want to be on film with me. <laughs> Like to hold on. 
So for your alcohol, you kind of just saw me do it with the two by two gauze, but with some of these packages, the contents can kind of hang out in the package even when you rip them open. So you just sometimes have to rip them in a couple different directions and then usually it'll drop out without contaminating. So then without touching any of their supplies, I'm gonna put on my sterile gloves. If I have, um, but before I do that, I'm gonna wash my hands. And then if I have someone helping me, like Christina, sometimes what I'll have them do is put the line on top of the sterile field just so I don't have it touching the bed. Move it over just a little bit. See all those times of practicing sterile gloves in nursing school prepared me for these videos. <laughs> I don't know if that's still a thing if they send sterile gloves home with nursing students. <laughs> All right, so the next thing you're probably wondering if you haven't seen um, the newest version of the work instructions is why did I need two by two gauze? And if the anticipation hasn't built up enough for you, I'm going to tell you right now. So today's your lucky day. So there's two pieces in a package. What you're going to do is you're going to take your alcohol and one piece in one hand, and then you're just going to have your other piece in the other hand. And actually, before I do that, I'm going to just unscrew. So erase that, it's just gonna be the two pieces. So you're gonna unscrew them here. You're gonna let this drop so that I still remain sterile without touching the dirty clave. And then I'm gonna take the alcohol and clean right here. And then you wanna let the alcohol completely dry. So Christina, the one step I didn't do, which is why you always have a second person when you're doing this, is I didn't drop my new clave onto my sterile field when I prepared. So can you open that oh, up yeah. and drop it for me? And maybe um, help me connect the syringe. So that's why even when you've done this a bunch of times, sometimes you, oh, it's always good to have that second person. You want to attach to the syringe? I should have, but it's okay. See, she didn't want to be on video and I made her. <laughs> and then if you can kind of squeeze on there, well, there we go. So this is unprimed. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna connect it right here and this is how you're gonna pull your specimen. So I can drop this gauze right now and then I can unclamp this and I'm gonna pull my specimen out. So this would be blood pulling out. And if I have my helper nearby, I could always hand them the specimen until I'm ready to transfer in just so I have less chance of contaminating. Now this is no longer sterile, I'm just clean now. If I thought for any reason this touched anything, I could before I flush, always clean again on the blue clave. And then I'm just going to do a pulsatile flush according to the pediatric um, normal saline flush table or if you're heparinizing you can follow the heparin flush table and then as, as I'm pushing in the last little bit I'm going to clamp it up. So I'm doing a pulsatile flow and then I clamp on the last little bit. And then I would either reconnect if I want to reconnect or I would put a green Kiros cap on it. And then I need to make sure to go into Cerner and document my needles adapter change and if I did any kind of tubing change that as well so that we know when the tubing and needleless adapter are due to be changed again. Now as far as transferring that specimen, I'm going to pop off the dust cover in this blood culture bottle. I'm gonna scrub it with alcohol. I'm 
this would be in its packaging, so I would remove the blood culture transfer device from its packaging. If it's not a fungal bottle, the top of it's gonna to be too narrow to fit on the tubing. So you, this actually is removable to widen up the open space. I'm gonna take my blood specimen, screw it on without touching it, making sure not to contaminate, and then you would just insert in the blood bottle and it'll suck in. And then you would label um, with your, you know, your Cerner bridge and you would send this down to lab. Thank you so much.